Da, da, theme song, theme song. Da, da, da. <laughs> I'm Tanya. I'm Nikki. And we are A Thousand Eyes and One, the podcast. <laughs> it's so official now. <laughs> to find previous episodes, go to thousandeyespodcast.com. You can also find us on YouTube. A Thousand Eyes in One Podcast. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, we're on Twitter as Thousand Eyes One, Facebook and Instagram, A Thousand Eyes in One. If you're interested in our speculative fiction book club, that is Wine on an Empty Stomach on Instagram. Okay, so I haven't figured out yet, still, what the intro means, if anything. Have you? I don't know. No, I still think it's High Valeria. Um... But I, I haven't. You mean old been Valeria? Willing... Yes, <laughs> old Valeria. <laughs> um, and I just I haven't. I'm like afraid to go digging to find more information because you know spoilers are all over the place. Mm. And um, I think I'll just wait for somebody smarter to say something. I was just about to say I'm just gonna wait for somebody smart to tell me what it means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to go digging because you, you like I might find out something that like is happening in an episode that somebody saw in the like releases in LA or wherever. Right. I still like it though. Oh, I like it too. <laughs> week two, don't know what still approve. <laughs> <laughs> week three. Oh week no, three. yeah, oh, week two no, of the yeah. intro. Yeah, week two of the intro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just like we know that the realm will bleed once the Targaryens start, you know, fighting. So there's that but beyond that little tidbit of symbolism um i haven't gleaned much else out of it okay yeah me neither in the stepstones Kragus jahar is still absolutely beating up butchering completely butchering uh corliss and damien's men yeah and the thing that stood out to me in that scene was the guy who mm -hmm. was when he saw Damon flying in on Caraxes and yeah. he's like, save me, my prince, and then gets stepped on by the dragon. <laughs> I was I like, shouldn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, my first yeah. thought was that's that's exactly what happens to the small folk while they yeah. fight over mm -hmm. a crown. Yeah. You know, is. it's it's I was like, yeah, you the small folk think these people are for them, but really they're about they're for themselves. And and like the thing is is like Karaxi stepped on him and like Damon would never know that it yeah. happens. He has no idea it even happened. He doesn't even know who that guy was, yet that guy was fighting for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very and, excited and that his prince he? had come. Yeah, he was so excited that the prince had come because you know, he's he believes the propaganda. But like what was that guy gonna get from fighting in this war? Right? Some coins to bring home, I guess. Maybe. You go home and find out that his his lady wife is already shacked up with somebody new. Yeah. So that's what stood out to me as far as as far as the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's just that guy. It's just that there's a war. It's like an endless it's like this endless battle that's going on and it's clear that they're losing. And, and like dragons one dragon just isn't enough. No, it's not. But unless you just want to kill that, everyone, which I'll save for later. Okay. Because I was confused. Um, yeah. Yeah. You want to talk it's about Rhaenyra? Oh, wait. Yeah, we can talk about it. I was like, I just want to just, I don't know if it's just me. I feel like the pacing of the, ep of the episodes, not the shows, but like, I don't know. It's taking a little bit of getting used to for me. I feel like in Game of Thrones, you kind of saw it. there was more intercut between the, the two storylines or like the multiple storylines that were happening. Mm -hmm. And it's like they start with this one and then they have all this like middle stuff somewhere else that's happening, that's happening somewhere else. And then they go back to what they started with. And I feel like just for me, from an editing standpoint, like I kind of like I appreciate the opportunity to be immersed uninterruptedly in like what's going on with the hunt. But I kind of I kind of miss seeing what's going on in the other place like i feel like there was a cut where they could have squished something in but that's just my opinion um that's i mean that's fair i when i just rewatched like, uh, it yeah <laughs> well when i, I rewatched it yeah sorry go ahead no i was gonna say when i rewatched it i absolutely wanted to get through 
the beginning part and get straight back to the stepstones. Yeah. Because to me, that was a much more exciting part of the episode. Yeah. Um, and it just like, it would have been, because they brought him up. Because I just like, I felt like as an editor, there were several opportunities within it to like cut back to see like what was happening. So you can feel more kind of more invested, like similar to how they, how they edited Emma's scene, Emma's birth, birthing scene with the joust, right, you know, right, like a right. little bit more of that to kind of um, remind us what the dangers are and what else is happening while we're throwing tourneys and having parties for names days, you know, right. Um, I feel like it's diminishing the urgency, but maybe that's the intention. So, you know, who be. am I to story tell for them? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to talk about Renera and her interactions with Alicent. Uh, um, when Allison pulled rank when she wanted that singer to leave uh -huh. I completely understood Rhaenyra's anger her bitterness because her handmaiden has become her queen uh -huh. and the funny thing is is like when Allison walked in and uh, and the, the what, are they, what are they called in Westeros the troubadour the bard the bard um, was singing and he's like, oh, your grace. She thought, Renera thought he was talking to her. <laughs> <laughs> and she he was, she, she never looked up from her book. And then, you know, the little does so, she know, it happens to be. Yeah. So I thought she was purpose, purposefully ignoring Allison and refusing to stand for her. Yeah, I didn't. The first time, the second time I watched it, I thought that she was just like, maybe that he was talking to her. Um, and then she's like pointedly ignoring him, her Allison later. Uh, and that little battle of just like, really, do I have to like, are we really have to go there? Like, I get why Renera is mad. It's been three years. Obviously, they haven't mended any fences. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> Nothing um, at all. But it's just, it's like, I get why she's mad. But uh, they, I don't know. I feel like they like play on her being like exceptionally bratty a couple times in this episode, which makes her look like younger mm. and not not grown up yet. and. You know, but again, I, I, I can understand her because Allison married her father, what, six months mm -hmm. after her mother died and immediately gave him a son, the son that he's always wanted. Yeah. And that's a thing that was already, you know, a sore spot for her, plus grieving her mother. Yeah. And she's supposed to celebrate. But then again, like I said, her handmaiden is now her stepmother and queen. Mm -hmm. this girl who have really didn't have any her. rank yeah mm -mm. this girl who didn't have any rank and no like um strategic value <laughs> or anything like that nope she was just her handmaiden she was high born but she was just her handmaiden yeah and now she's the queen and i think if it had been any other lady but her specific handmaiden and like only friend Mm -hmm. that she wouldn't be as bitter about it because she seemed to be accepting of it being Lena. Right. She would have accepted this 12-year-old, her 12-year-old cousin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, she, like, she didn't see it coming. It was still quite a blow. And, you know, she was prepared to for it to be you know, a duty that, you know, it's like he says it later. It's like, it's our duty to marry uh, for advantage. You know, it's as a royal, that's what we do. We have to marry for advantage. But remember um, she says but later he didn't, in the episode, but, so, what but was he the didn't. advantage? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's why, that's what I'm saying is that she's upset because she like, Lena, she could understand. Allison made no sense. None. Yeah. So everybody's celebrating and I forgot which Lannister that is, is all up in Otto Hightower's air about Hey, 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 we've got a male ear. <laughs> was that Thailand? I can't remember if Thailand was Jason. I guess it's Thailand. No, Jason was the one who wanted Jason, to marry Jason her. Jason is the, is the one who's proposing. Uh -huh. Thailand, I can't, I guess it's Thailand, the one who's on the hand, because they also mentioned that Jason has a twin. Right. I think, isn't Thailand the, the twin? But then who's the old guy? Oh, there was an older, no, the older guy that was talking to Otto. That's mm -hmm. Otto's brother. That's Otto's brother. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. I, I miss I misunderstood their connection. Yeah, Tyland Lannister in the book was his was uh Viserys's master of ships. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, well, yeah, after um, Corliss left. Yeah. So yeah, that was Otto's brother that was all in his ear. Yeah. I was like, you're really brave saying this out loud here where other people can hear you. Right. 
Where is his Master of Whispers? I don't think he has one. He really needs one. <laughs> well, doesn't Laris Strong become a Master of Whispers? We met him this episode. Clubfoot. Laris mm-hmm, Clubfoot, mm-hmm. they call him. Oh, maybe. I can't remember if he does. I, I feel like he I probably remember. was, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they do. But they did introduce him, so... You yeah. know, some they introduced him and they mentioned Breakbones, Sir yes. Harwin Strong. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna meet Breakbones soon. I hope he's fine. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Make it worth our while. So far, we're lacking. <laughs> <laughs> we also learned in this episode that Rainera has not been in contact with Damon all this time. Mm-hmm. And remember, we were wondering if they were gonna do like weird, groomy stuff between them, but she hasn't even been in contact with him. Yeah, for three years. So, I guess not. Which Maybe is good. Not. Which is which is good, unless they do it like after you know when he comes back from the stepstones, um, right? But which we've, is possible, we've had, but yeah, but we have talk of Rhaenyra marrying Lenor as well, whose age I can't figure out because he's oh. younger than Lena, mm-hmm. and Lena was twelve, and it's only been three years. Yeah. So like, is he Maybe like they're 14? making him older. I don't know. Be old enough to be at battle. Yeah, like, is he supposed to be, like, 14? Or did they make her Lenor, Lena's older brother? I bet they did that. But no, because we see them sitting in, in both of them, they're sitting in the, at the, at the tourney, you know? Yeah, they were both sitting there, and he was a kid. Yeah. So, like, that's kind of a big age jump. Hmm. I guess we'll find out next episode. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh speaking of Jason Lannister. His ap- <laughs> his approach to Rainera was so funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> like he completely jumped the gun. Oh my god. He was so silly and it's just like it's so funny because as soon as he started talking to her, I was like, oh, this is, oh, uh, he, okay. And it took her a second to get it because she's like, okay, why are you talking to me? And then he starts mentioning dragon pits and she's like, wait, 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 wait. Why would you need one? <laughs> why would you need one? <laughs> we saw him checking her out earlier though. Mm-hmm. When she first was walking through that through party. Yeah. yeah, he was checking her out, which means he had already talked to her dad, I guess. At mm-hmm. first I thought he was checking her out. I thought it was going to be someone that her dad was going to be worried about with her. But right. then I realized, no, it's someone her dad's trying to set her up with. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was just shooting from the hip. And I thought that was so funny. And so whack. <laughs> also in the hunt party events, whatever, we really see Viserys unraveling. Mm. He gets so drunk. Like every time he's back at the party, he's so drunk. Mm-hmm. He's yelling at Rhaenyra in public. Yeah. You know, the hand has to step in and be like, hey, this is not the time or the place. Yeah, it's he's unraveling. Um, it's, just, it's a lot. It's it's I mean, and you see him, he's like talks about it later. He's like, he's like, I'm having these had this dream that I've been chasing and now I don't know what to do. And, and... he admits that that dream is what killed his wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was glad we got that apology or acknowledgement. Admission. Yeah. Um, I mean, we still don't know if if Rhaenyra knows that you know he cut they cut her open. Yeah, she I feel like that's that a hard died. to keep secret. I'm sure Maybe. she heard it somewhere through the grapevine. Yeah, and I don't know. I feel like she's like she's getting very much angry teenager, but she's you know it's funny. You know, she says in the carriage when they're on the way over there, she's like, "Nobody is here for me." Like, yeah no, nobody's here for me and he was like he's trying to like play her like no and he just looked at her true. but then but when they exit and everybody's clapping for egg on the second egg on the second like everybody's out of the carriage except her and not once do they like also announce that the princess right is there right? right which they should have you know, and so- we find out really from jason's slip up that they have been talking about egg on the second becoming the heir mm-hmm you know, Everyone's all these just lords. Just assuming that, yeah. yeah, the they meaning these these other lords. <laughs> we have what do they say? Is like we have to do it, or else you know the 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 ways of gods and men will not be. So I'm just like, you mean the ways of men and men? <laughs> 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 the gods have nothing to do with this. They don't give a fuck about who ascends the Iron Throne. Um, although maybe they do, if we want to talk about the White Heart, which comes later, because that whole that the whole hunt for me, I was just. Uh, 
I do I okay it. I do want to I absolutely want to talk about that but I was about to ask you mm-hmm. what did you think of the idea of marrying Rhaenyra to Aegon Aegon the toddler Aegon the toddler I think that I don't know that it's if they married her to the baby right they would still find a way to make another man be regent you know or just like to put him in power until the baby comes of age and totally you know she and be I, a, I think in she, Westeros boys come of age at like 16 so she'd yeah, be that's like a long time she'd be in like 33 or so yeah a queen without of, agency for all that time and having to deal with the machinations of other people who are c- controlling the crown no no no. I think it's yeah. a bad idea I think that to marry her to Lena was a much smarter idea thanks it What's is your name again strong Strong, He's, strong, he strong. always comes he always comes through with the good advice he does but it's starting to make me suspicious of him honestly because why doesn't he say this these things in the meetings mm-hmm. and just like what advantage do you have by like just whispering to the king you know mm. what's your what's your motive but his advice is sound it's yeah. not like he's giving him bad advice no it's good advice it's too good <laughs> <laughs> we're so suspicious now thanks thanks Varys yeah Varys and Baelish yeah Rhaenyra and Kristen Cole on their little date mm-hmm. how cute that was and it's nice to see that you know I mean he's been her sworn sword for three years now yeah and it's nice to see that they've like developed a friendship because her mm-hmm. only friend really was Allison and mm-hmm. the Lord Commander who's yeah. a you know a much older man who's not really like her companion or anything right I love when he asked, you want me to kill him? Yeah, that was funny. It was so funny. <laughs> and she just laughs. And I was like, oh, yay. They have a good vibe. This is great. Yeah. But when I when I was, um, I watched it the second time with Brian and he kept mm-hmm. going, are they going to make out? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll see, right? We'll, we'll learn the truth finally. I know which mm. truth I accept. I'll wait until all of that goes down before I say anything, though. Mm. will they or won't they <laughs> i'm so sorry we i'm literally like so tired don't of know. giggly we have no idea <laughs> uh yeah i like getting to see them kind of on their own and you see that she's got some money that she can be herself around you know someone who is very much aware of all the politicking going on around her mm-hmm. and is still able to be honest and someone uh, who can keep up with her on a horse. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> she asks him, will the realm ever accept me as their queen? And his response, they'll have no choice but to. Yeah. To me, that, that sounded like a no. I mean, it technically is a no. No, they're not going to, but they have no choice but to. You right. Know? They cannot not accept you. Um, but they won't in their hearts acknowledge you as 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 um as their ruler, especially not now that there's a boy, you know, and she's pregnant again, right? Ugh. Viserys but, really does reiterate over and over though that he wants Rhaenyra to be his mm-hmm. heir, and that night that he was drunk in front of the bonfire, drunk off of yeah. truth serum. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, we see him waver yeah. but he does come back and he even admits to Rhaenyra that he wavered which and I really I thought, liked I liked I like it that I liked their last, yeah I like that they, that they could finally have a conversation mm-hmm. and kind of clear the air a little bit shout out to her dress in that scene I'm obsessed with I it I loved it oh I absolutely God. loved it <sighs> so pretty <laughs> While she's out with um, Kristen Cole, I also enjoyed the, um, what do you call it? The when they're cutting back back and forth between scenes. Um, which which scenes were they going back and forth between? When Rhaenyra was stabbing the boar, and then oh oh yes, Viserys standing. I mean, yeah, Viserys mm-hmm. standing in front of the bonfire, and it was like so blatantly fire and blood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah oh 
it's just such a contrast, you know, because we, especially like when you go from the next scene where he's like the then all like she's fighting for her life and then the horn blows and he's being summoned for the hunt, right? Mm-hmm. The hunt must go on, and you're just seeing it's just like she was literally out there in the wilderness and the bonfire fighting, like actually not intentionally hunting, but became hunted, right? Mm-hmm. The boar came after her, um, and she had to fight as opposed to this thing where like the king's the king's entourage has done everything for him all he has to do is come and stab the thing and he it's, couldn't it's, even do that and right. he couldn't even do that properly you know and it, i thought it was just like very very just loaded with symbolism uh to see these two things you know like what this what you know a potential ruler and what an actual ruler um have to contend with and because he he did not hunt that stag for one second no that's he was getting hunting. drunk the whole time yeah it's not hunting oh the people the the the, the dogs are on the trail he's like okay whatever sip sip you know um it's just like and i think that he must know also just like deep down that it's all a farce mm. well like, also what? i think that we know that he cares a lot about you know symbolism and dreams mm-hmm. and all those things and so we have all these people telling him that since the white heart was spotted for Egon's birthday that yeah. it's a sign it's a sign it's this huge sign the king killing the king of the kingswood you know mm-hmm. and then they catch it and it's not even it's white. not even the white heart and he so, sees and he's like oh my god he's like this is huh Wait so it's second. like was that was that relief or was it disappointment like is he relieved that all those signs did not necessarily point to him being wrong about choosing Rhaenyra Mm -hmm. or was it disappointment about his dream not being right about his son being king that's a good question I don't have an answer Hmm. maybe a little bit of both it's a tough position you know like he said that he never he never thought he was going to remarry he never thought he'd have a son he never you know and he also just recognized that how much damage it did to his relationship with her pining over a kid that did not even exist for all that time and he's not a rabble rouser he doesn't want to stir the pot and cause trouble and all of that and Mm -hmm. that's exactly until he gets drunk (laughs) (laughs) and then he'll talk out talk out of the front of his mouth do you have a dragon (laughs) oh my god that was so funny (laughs) Oh, he had it. Jason shook. Like, what, what rebellions? <laughs> it's like that's what you get for flapping your gums. Maybe you should keep some things to yourself. Yeah, exactly. It's not running hush, your hush. mouth all the time. Uh-huh. The white heart. <laughs> I'm just laughing because it's just like they both checked him. You know, he's like, yeah. "Oh, I'm Jason Lannister." She's like, "Oh, I think I could tell by all the lines." Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and did you notice that after telling her it's the finest honeyed wine and all that, as soon as she leaves, he just pours out both glasses? Yes. Yes. What a Because brat. she drank it and she was like, she made a face like, oh. Right. She wasn't impressed. No Arbor Gold. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to, I want to figure out what Arbor Gold is and drink it. Mm. I was going to say the white heart it chose, or it chose, maybe mm-hmm. it chose, Rhaenyra. It chose. I think it chooses if you're going by all the, like, you know, other... uh, mythology about the white heart and the white stags appearing to people it chose to appear to her and she chose not to kill it Mm -hmm. and her father was gonna kill it yep and so what does that symbolize you know it's just like he it's got the whole thing tied up like he and he would have killed it at being tied up still not being like you know it's just the difference between hunting for sport and hunting for survival Mm -hmm. um and whew, i mean they would have eaten just, it but this is still it was, still was hunting for sport they would have served sport, it at yeah. the feast like, like do you i mean let's, i think of like robert baratheon would he have gone on a hunt like that no no robert that's why he died <laughs> <laughs> well yes we know that's why he died because he wanted to do everything in his damn self but like i just think about he just like the, the street types of kings you know <laughs> robert baratheon belonged to the streets and he missed them uh. <laughs> because i mean that is a thing to consider the safety of the king yeah while hunting but you know i guess that's why you have like all you know 100 guards around you did you think there was any significance to it being a boar that hunted her yeah i was looking i was digging in my (laughs) in my my conspiracy brain 
All right. Um, Put on your tinfoil hat. Tell me what you got. I don't know. It's not fully formed, but because I saw that in that and the fact that he was like, you know, like Viserys was going to go and and kill the tied up stag. There's that. And then I was like, okay, and there's the boar. We know the boar kills that. But I don't remember if the boar is a sigil of anybody. Let's see. Oh, no. Craig Hall. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm oh, like, sorry. <laughs> Although their house words are none so fierce, which I do appreciate. Mm. Yeah, no. So I don't know. But go for it. What's your speculation? Oh, I had no idea why why a boar. I guess just boars just live in those woods. <laughs> and yeah. a, and a, a heart isn't going to hunt a person. So. Mm -hmm. I just wondered mm -hmm. if maybe there was significance, but I guess there doesn't have to be significance in everything. I guess not. It would be nice if it was, though. Um, I mean, I, it was significant away. the way she was stabbing it. You could see her releasing her. Oh my gosh, yeah. So much fresh rage and frustration because I didn't know that she would. Well, I mean, I didn't expect it to stir after Sir Kristen had like stabbed it. Um, but then I just seen it that at that point she was ready to fight, you know, yeah. and she's walking back. It's just like, what, what two different, two entirely different scenes. Like what did Viserys look like returning from his hunt? And what did she look like returning from her hunt? Right. You and know? I, I loved, um, did you notice how disgusted Jason Lannister was? Oh yeah. Her? That was my favorite part. <laughs> and like, and then you see the guys who are skinning animals, I guess they might be soldiers or whatever. And they're like yeah. impressed and the kind of smiling and chuckling. Exactly. Um, like, well, that she paints the face of a warrior queen, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, what does that tell them about her as queen? Here she comes back in riding pants, covered in mm -hmm. blood and dragging a boar behind her. Whereas you have Allison, the picture perfect lady and queen, and she's, you know, all delicate and, you know, sweet and demure. And yeah, then you get Rhaenyra. And socializing with all the other people, like all the other ladies of the court, you know, just like doing a really good job. How much of a jerk Cara Lannister when she was talking all that shit to Rhaenyra, the <laughs> one who had the pug? Oh, I was I, I was distracted by the pug. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's so cute. Um, yeah, but she had much to say. She had, and and it's interesting that she felt comfortable saying all of this in front of Allison and tells you that they don't really see her. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, they they know she's the queen, but they're not exactly frightened by her. Or worried she, about she's not her. a Targaryen. She doesn't have a dragon. Yeah, and she's not a Cersei who'll have her, you know, taken down into the dungeons and tortured because nobody would have said something like that to Cersei other than like Tywin or Tyrion. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. Back at the castle, we have more scheming from Otto. <laughs> I'm so sick of his schemes. And I think we can talk spoilers at the end again. Sure. Because I have some thoughts about his scheming. Mm hmm. We also see that Viserys is missing fingers, multiple. So I'm assuming his back finally healed, but his pinky didn't heal. And yeah. his ring, the next finger also didn't heal. And so I think it's kind of telling us what to expect. Like, yeah. this man is rotting away. Poor Viserys. Yeah, it's funny because I was wondering about his back. I was like, how are they having sex? And she doesn't know that his, his back is not healed. Like, yeah, it must. I mean, remember they said they were going to cauterize it. So that must yeah. have been what they did. Yeah. Since he's still <laughs> alive. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yikes. So, oh, yeah. So I was saying Otto and his scheming, but also Otto's brother, whose name I can't recall at the moment. Me neither. But they're both, these high towers are just messy. Mm -hmm. And the way he's pushing Allison to say something to Viserys to change his mind it's just so shady and I don't understand why Viserys doesn't see how shady he is but I guess you know again they keep saying Viserys isn't you know the intrigue is not his drunk. game no and he just doesn't he I don't know I think he really takes everything at face value until he is forced to actually look at things for what they are because he doesn't want to. He just wants everything to be like lovey and peasy. He's such he a He wants hippie. to be the next Jay Harris. And have just this peace, long, peaceful reign. But what did Lionel Strong tell him about Jay Harris? He was like, oh, he the reign was peaceful. Troublesome daughters. <laughs> Kids are driving him nuts. He had troublesome daughters. Especially that Sarah. Sarah broke Jay Harris. Yeah. I can't wait to talk about her later when we do some other stuff. 
Yeah. So they're scheming and they're just like, he's got to name. I mean, that's how that like in their in, in his mind, it must be like, hello, this was the entire point. You married him. So the king would be like you, your kid would be named heir to the Iron Throne and like, you know, elevate House Hightower. Um, that's that's I mean, that's his long game, you know, like my daughter will eventually have a son who will be named king. Mm -hmm. like why else to go through all this right and hopefully he'll still be alive yeah and continue to To be be his hand hand. (laughs) and if he's not his hand then regent right right Mm -hmm. right he can be because you know the king's like like you said yeah he looks like he's on his way out and obviously again that's not even like a spoiler type thing because we know the show is all about his succession i mean Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah his yeah alicent what she said to him about how can she raise a man who would take his sister's birthright Mm -hmm. so that made me feel that allison was a little bit more sincere about wanting about rainera to be queen queen. and i think i got that too because like even when uh that's what i was gonna say it's like when they were um when she was like holding court with the ladies like she kind of kept like uh defending rainera defending rainera or like taking her side or saying you know like in little like not very overtly but like oh no she's respect your future queen but she was like no no it's like showing that her support is behind her um how do you think Rhaenyra took that because to me it seemed like it was just patronizing yeah and that maybe Allison was just trying to get back in her good graces because now she has no friends I mean possibly but and I mean I don't I feel like the way that Rhaenyra is wired like how could she not see it as anything but uh but um the word just fell out of my head. Patronizing? Yes, patronizing. Like, how could she <laughs> see it? Just like, like exasperated. Um, but how could she see it as anything but, especially like in front of all these people? You know? Right. It's a show. It's a show, especially when she said many times, like, it doesn't matter what I say or do unless, you know, it pisses you off and then maybe you pay a little bit of attention oh that's what i was gonna say before it's like i was i kept waiting and wonder and wondering and worrying if um you know the fact that she was out all night was going to turn into like a being a problem of her maidenhood and mm. honor and this thing because i feel like had she been any other lady it would have absolutely come into question someone who was out all night with even if he was in the king's guard it's still like you know well it shows that they trust Kristen cole because it didn't come up at all yeah or maybe it was and also that they trust her i guess what about g when she said you think a husband will make me happy or a man will make me happy you were like is rainera a lesbian like, <laughs> or maybe bi or maybe i know that that's not a thread they'll really pull on but i like that she got it out <laughs> i did appreciate that uh, I like the idea of a queer Rhaenyra. Mm-hmm. It adds, you know, some more conflict because you know, like we said, we, it seemed like her and Allison kind of had, mm-hmm. not necessarily a sexual relationship, but like a r- almost romantic one. You yeah. know, they loved each other a lot. I was happy that though that he finally said she gets to choose her own husband. Me too. And she seemed really happy because it felt like you know he's on her side again Mm -hmm. you mean that that honest conversation that they had it was just like it went a long way to kind of setting things right and just be like you know what listen i know that you're not happy i'm doing the things that i have to do i want like all i and he tells everybody else he's like i just want her to be happy you know Mm -hmm. like she's not and it's and he means it he means that he's not like um like we've talked about in some of the other episodes of being like women being wombs for hire and just like, you know, my, my, your purpose here is just to breed. Um, mm-hmm. He was like, no, he's like, I want you to have a companion and I want you to strengthen your claim with a strong match, you know, um, because people will come for you. And I think he's preparing for that. Like, you know, I'm going to stand yeah. behind you, but they're going to come for you. You need to be ready. If you're unmarried, like, it, uh, yeah. Yeah. If she marries a, into a strong house, with a good army and a lot of people they can call on and good mm-hmm. allies. Yeah. Then it helps to shore up her claim. Yeah. And I feel like, um, like Strong was saying, because who's going to take it from her? Yeah. 
like house yeah, house full layer is the smartest one and i love their sigil i love their sigil too i was actually looking for banners <laughs> i knew you would <laughs> i know i know you know i gotta add it uh, i love it i'm always looking for banners just a quick thing thinking back to allison and rainera's mm-hmm. not it's not even a rivalry it's really just rainera being pissed at allison but um when she asked if she should be in the carriage in that condition and uh, she mentions that Aegon was born, you know, easily without problems. And I was like, oh, my God, Allison, you there, you should have said literally anything, anything else. Because you're just reminding her that her mother died having her brother. Yeah. And you lived. Right. And like the and because of all of that, we're in the situation now. I'm going to a right. place that I don't want to be with people who are not going to acknowledge me to celebrate a baby who is probably going to take my place. Right. It was just absolutely the wrong thing to say. Yeah, and everybody she... in the carriage in the wheelhouse <laughs> knew it. Um, yeah, yeah. Poor girl, um, she's just being triggered by everything left and right. Let's go back to the stepstones. Mm-hmm. What is up with his skin? <laughs> okay, what is his do... condition? Okay. Can we talk about that? Like, why does he look like that? Why did they have to okay. make him such a monstrosity? I think it looks like he had dragon scale and burned it off not dragon scale scale. i'm sorry gray scale yeah he had gray scale and burned it off because he has all those gray patches Mm -hmm. but he also has all these burn Burn scars yeah maybe um i was hoping that we'd actually get more of him we didn't even get any lines no and i just well i i just don't like that they made him like I don't know. I feel like villains are really easy to kill when they're not really human, you know? And yeah, he was so twitchy. He was like, just like, I was like, I wanted more from him because here's somebody who's giving you a run for your money. He's not a savage. They're, like, these people are not savages. You know, they're just not Westerosi. Um, they're just pirates. Yeah, so I wanted to see more, I don't know, elegance <laughs> from him? Or, or even just really knowing his motives besides just pillaging yeah because for it to continue for three years it had to be more than just pillaging because he would have just pillaged and went away and yeah. just pillaged somewhere else exactly but we pirates don't, we don't, don't really have settlements into, um... that's not a thing really <laughs> <laughs> hold on i'm gonna look up his wiki because now i have questions yeah no i don't see anything about him having a skin condition <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they wanted to make him more evil. Creepy, a bigger threat. Yeah. Because it says in the wiki that um they were paying the Trarchies tolls for safe passage mm-hmm. through the stepstones. But because of Craig as his uh his their behavior drove up the tolls. Right. So it wasn't necessarily that Craig Astrohar was going after Westeros. Yeah. Mm. Just making it expensive for them to do business. Right. I was really, I mean, were you surprised by Allison's advice to um, Viserys with regards to Damon? No, I thought she, well, we know that she can speak to him plainly. Mm-hmm. Um. I wasn't really surprised. It's, you know, she seems like someone who has sense. Mm-hmm. And so when he gets this letter asking for, for help from Vaymond, Valarian, Corliss's brother, um, who kind of looks like, uh, what's his name? Sterling K. Brown. Is that his name? Mm, the only Sterling I know, his last name is Archer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look it up later and show you. Mm-hmm. Um so she she gets he gets this letter for help from Vaymond. And I thought it was kind of funny when um Rhaenyra asked him if if uh Damon asked for help and he said he'd rather that he'd sooner <laughs> die. Yeah. <laughs> he he proves that. Mm-hmm. Um but Alicent was right. Do you want is is Westeros gonna be better if Kragus is alive or dead? Yeah. If he's able to continue or if he's stopped. Yeah, what's better for the realm? And I think that's that's the only, I mean, it is really the only question. And, you know, he he is being told that it will make the crown look weak. But he he looks weak by just letting Otto <laughs> decide everything. Yeah. Just, you know, 
tell him what to do without him really thinking for himself because it just seemed like he didn't really think of any of this for himself it's Mm-mm. just other people telling him what it's going to look like exactly and in his mind he's like whatever he's like i didn't even want to have anything to do with this so i'm just going to turn my head and ignore it and hopefully it'll go away and resolve itself but it hasn't and now it's becoming a bigger problem so you know it is time to address it um at yeah. the war council on the and uh what was it were they no they weren't on drift mark where were they no they're on um something stone anyway mm-hmm. the stepstones war council i guess i'll call them yeah Faymond does not want Damon there at all. <laughs> and he feels like Damon is the reason reason that they're losing. And why is that? I don't know. Maybe he's just he needs a scapegoat because I guess they figured that once you bring Damon into the war, like eventually the king is going to have to intercede, and he hasn't. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So Damon is the reason they're losing because the king won't send help because it's Damon. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you for clearing that up for me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was very, very just like for him to talk about, you know, he's still the prince, you know? Right. And for him to speak about him like that, like is super well, risky. Well, Corliss checked you. I know. Yeah, Corliss Because checked, it did seem like, like he was trying to start a mutiny saying mm-hmm. like, why should we follow Damon? Yeah. And uh, Leonor getting all in it. I was like, oh, okay. And then even, and then, you know, Corliss is like, I, I, I. <laughs> I can talk <laughs> shit to my brother. You cannot talk shit to your uncle. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The yeah. wording, I think what pissed Damon off, well, we know what pissed Damon off was the wording mm-hmm. of Viserys's letter. He's basically like, since you're getting your ass whooped, fine. <laughs> I'll come help. Uh, you know, it's like, it's I... like what, um, when Martin says to Gina, I, fine Gina damn I will marry you are you happy and that's like his proposal <laughs> <laughs> that's that was that was the kind of yeah letter that yeah. uh Viserys sent you guys yeah. are doing terribly and you know all right I'll slide you I'll slide you a little help so you don't keep sucking and by the way I'll keep you in my thoughts and prayers <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was about time it was about time um I think that it was really good that we we got to see Lenor here, right? Because obviously he is someone who has seen battle. Mm-hmm. He's battle tested. He's got a little bit of leadership experience. I think they're setting it up to say like, oh, maybe this is a plausible match. Um, yeah, he seems strong. Save that for the spoiler outspoken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's strong. Mm-hmm. He's outspoken. Um, and he rides sea smoke. Sea smoke. I love sea smoke. Okay, let's talk about Damon's fake surrender. Let's just get into it. I mean, I love how bloodthirsty Damon is because it's just like one of those things is like, you know, especially after watching that whole scene with after the surrender, it's just like, this is somebody who was built to just fight. He this is somebody who just battle. loves to fight too. He loves fighting. He loves fighting just like um it may, it reminds me of other other brothers and other warriors that we've seen, like Jamie Lannister or the Hound, people or or even uh, you know, Jon Snow or that's not people who or Robert, people who love the fight. Caledon Storm fighting. Cal <laughs> there's there goes our uh there goes the mention this episode we need like a stormlight a, a storm, archive a storm father voice every time we mention it <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been exciting. yeah you can tell like he just <laughs> likes to fight he likes fighting because it doesn't even seem like he told Coralus what his plan was no but the funny thing is, is like that's what the boat. plan was right this is what Raymond was saying he was like oh we should just who's like who's stupid enough to just go over there on his own and then Damon flies in and like, un- like little did Damon know, like this is what they'd actually been planning, hope like hoping would happen. And then he just executed their plan without even talking to them. Well, you know, after beating up the messenger. After beating up the messenger, which was poor form, Damon. Poor, poor form. form, Damon. Yeah, but his fake surrender, like he gets down, he kneels. We get to see Dark Sister. I was like, oh. okay, I was like, okay. First of all, he's not oh. giving up Dark Sister, so there's that. So this mm-hmm. must be fake. And then you know it keeps going 
and then he kneels and I'm like okay the guy's gonna get close and he's gonna whip out the sword or do yeah. something with it and then he hands the guy the sword and I'm like okay Caraxes is gonna drop in and like, <laughs> light everybody up Caraxes doesn't show up and I'm like what the fuck Damon I know you didn't surrender we know he doesn't surrender we know you, you don't surrender it's not in your nature it's yeah he's not gonna just to the to the crab feeder like come on so when he pulled his knives out and just started going ham on everybody, I was like, oh, okay, there, there's, there's, there's a Damon, Damon we know and love. <laughs> <laughs> there's our Damon going on a killing spree. What's funny is, um, sorry, that was, I don't know if that was loud. What's funny is uh, the jokes people were making about him dodging all those arrows. Everybody was like, <laughs> Rick Han, uh, you see what you're supposed to have done? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I haven't seen this. <laughs> yeah, I saw. <laughs> that's really funny. I, di- I didn't realize that i mean of course of course like how could they not um yeah it just like just i just i like seeing him fighting for me the battle wasn't like or his slaughtery his slaughter (laughs) spree was not as like i don't know interesting or compelling as some other battles that we've seen um but i did like to just see him be in his element and we see him actually he does get hit by arrows a couple times yeah i think he got hit three times Mm -hmm. he pulled one out of his leg and then he had one in his shoulder and one looking like kind of in his chest yeah that he broke off he's like snap snap yeah 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 Yeah. if you get hit with an hour you're not supposed to pull it out you're supposed to push it all the way through (sighs) because pulling it out is going to like tear things up but if you push it all the way through it's kind of in a straight line it's easier to Mm -hmm. manage well, let's but, hope we never get hit by an hope, arrow. Yeah, let's hope I have never have to. Like, can you imagine? Like, that. just just push it all the way through. <laughs> I'd be like, bitch, are you crazy? Just keep first going. Of all, first of all, I'd just black out. Like, let's be honest. If I got hit by an arrow, I would faint. Everyone would would think that I had died. I don't know, dude. I've seen behind. you throw axes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but you didn't see me get hit by an axe. <laughs> I feel like you just keep going. I should post my axe throwing video to our Instagram. Yeah. I think I will. Yeah, yeah. Do it. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> uh, oh, it's funny. Um, yeah. And so he so he like lure he he lures them all out and they're coming out of the caves and you see, like, this is the reason I've had such a hard time defeating them, right? Because right, they've because got they've got dragon cover. do. Like, yeah. What are they gonna do? If they can't send a dragon in the cave in the cave, they can't, I mean, I guess they could have like in my mind, I was like put a dragon on each side of the of the things and just blow dragon fire in there but like i said what do i know about ancient dragon warfare (laughs) Um, but it also seems like that's the quickest way to get a dragon killed too right to get to to get trapped in a place where they can't escape um right right you know what's to stop them from you know executing a pincer movement coming around the back and right so uh, so yeah so they've been they've been entrenched in 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 these uh cliffs in the mountains so it's no wonder they haven't had an easy time but like the fact that damon surrender quote unquote surrender like actually lures them all out i just felt like it just i mean they all seemed in disbelief i have a hard time with that tunnel i do well they all seemed in disbelief yeah like none of them could believe it was really happening all the way up until he gave the sword you see you see the crab feeder, he keeps checking the skies because like me, he was waiting yeah, for Caraxes yeah. to show up for or for, possibly for sea smoke, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you see his men keep looking like, should I do this? And then when some, even when the guy yeah. who approaches him is approaching him warily, they have the arrows knocked. Everybody's waiting for him to do something. And then even after he yeah. takes the sword, he like looks back like, should I keep, you know, like, what do I do now? Because they were completely in disbelief. So I don't, I don't think that they were necessarily wrong i mean the right. signs were that he was really surrendering he did a good job of faking them out because i mean they were suspicious the whole time and they were yeah. right to be because as we learned because he ran through them yeah and i guess just like once they once they, they come out it's just like well it's just damon it's nobody else you know like here's your chance to kill a targaryen um, right and it's not like they have an air force to go and see the army coming <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You like that I called it the Air Force? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. And then we get then we get Sea Smoke and Lanor and just he's such a what a pretty dragon. Beautiful dragon. Uh so also I saw people were upset that he said Dracaris and that they're using that as the way to get the dragons to, you know, fire. Mm-hmm. Um 
I've seen complaints about it. People saying that that was Danny's thing and that she didn't have any of her family history to teach her that that's, that's what you're supposed to say. But um, that's they not have, how I felt about it. That's not how it seems like it'd be like the one thing that she learns from this. And even if she hadn't learned on. it, it yeah. seems like it's the word for fire. So yeah. it kind of just seems like it'd be basic that it, she would guess at that. And even if she didn't know for sure that that's what they said, it, it would make yeah. sense that somebody would just say fire. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that seems to me like if, like, just like, if, you're, if Viserys was doing the, the job that he was of like making sure that she that she understood about her family and her history, saying Jakar's would have came come down to even and if she figured it out by accident, it seems like it would be well. It known. seems like an easy thing to yeah. figure out by accident, though, like telling a dog to sit. Yeah, like hmm, I want this dog to sit down. He doesn't really understand me, so I guess I'll say sit. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> I know they don't all listen, right? Yeah, you have to see it. The trick is to hold a treat above their face and they do it and keep pushing it back until they're actually sit down. And then once they're sitting down on their hind legs and you give it to them and then they associate it. Oh. That's the fastest oh, okay. way to train a dog to sit. Well, I had no idea. How do you train a dragon to fire? Jakaris. <laughs> you said Jakaris and then you flick your lighter. You know, <laughs> get your fire, your flint. <laughs> Jakaris, Jakaris. <laughs> what did you think of the battle? That's what I think of it. Uh, you didn't like it? I don't know. It's underwhelmed. We've seen so many really awesome battles, and I just wanted more of it. I would have taken much less time at the hunt for a better battle. That's true. I wanted to be more extensive. It's just like, you know. There's like lots of people rushing to each other, but I felt like they didn't really follow anybody individually. And that's kind of like where you get the power, the power and and, and the a, like battle like, of the bastards. Yeah. It's like where you're where you get to sit with it with the character from their POV and kind of like experience the battle through their eyes. And um Who's maybe that's POV maybe would you have wanted. Anybody who was fighting? I mean, we we see Damon's, although <laughs> you're gonna be so mad at me. <laughs> I will say that they made it. They even though he killed him, Mr. Crabfeeder, off screen, and brought his body back. I feel like they learned from the Blackfish that you can't just die off screen and not have anybody. <laughs> the Blackfish is dead, Nikki. No, I'm along so with the Blackfish, <laughs> we never saw the body. He's still alive. <laughs> yeah, he cut him in half, and when he was walking out, I was like, "Is that a torso?" yeah just and like, then i was oh, like well we know it's not damon's torso because his story is not done yeah you know it's not possible that they would have ended it like that i mean we um, I, I don't know yeah no it's not that i mean we saw a little bit of dragon fight dra fighting from the air right with with mm -hmm. Lenor. i guess i would have liked to see corliss actually fight and follow him around because you know he's supposed to be fierce and shit um he was fighting with uh, an axe, I think, and he had a sword on. Yeah, there's some, I mean, and then we, I felt, and I also felt like this battle was not as gory as some battles that we've seen, although we did catch a couple morning stars to the face. Blech. That, yeah. Flat, splat, I mean, splat. the, the tourney in the first episode was far more gruesome yeah. than the, this battle was. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe if they're saving the blood budget for something more spectacular. Well, it is about a civil war, so there there will be more battles to come. Yes. Because we, we haven't seen any dragon on dragon action mm -mm. either because so far the dragons are fighting together. Yep. Well, <laughs> together, as together as they can be. Yeah. They're on the fighting on the same side, I should yes. say. Yes. Fighting together. Yeah. So I don't know. I like I I don't know. What did you think about the battle? Um, so on my first watched, I enjoyed it. I did think it was moving really fast and I would have, like you said, I would have liked to see more fighting and not so much like cutting. I did like how the dragon picked people up and threw them. So like it was involved in the battle and, and more than just, you know, blowing fire down. I would though, though, again, I would have liked to see more of the crab feeder, like what makes him so terrifying other than the way yeah. he tortures people, you know? So to see him fight, it's Damon, I would have enjoyed that. I would have enjoyed seeing yeah. more of Corliss fighting. Corliss and Vaymon, really. Um, I would yeah, have liked to just... see Lenor fight on the ground. But Me maybe too. that's not his thing. He's a dragon rider. 
Yeah. But you should, I mean, but you, you know, people can still get pulled off dragons. You know how to fight. Yeah, everyone should know hand to combat. You know, it also is. Mm-hmm. Everyone should know hand to hand combat, Daenerys. Everyone, <laughs> even a dragon rider, should wear armor, yeah. Daenerys. Anyway, mm-hmm. I was gonna say about about um, crab feeder is that it's just like okay, why are all these men following you? Right, like what? Like what is it? Like what's in it for them? They're just out here away from their families, holding you know, ships hostage and taking ransoms and you know taxing the hell out of them. But like, why are they following you? What makes you the leader that they chose? And I feel like that's the the story that we're missing. Um, yeah, and it makes it just like I don't know. It makes this whole thing seem like okay, well, it's kind of wasted exposition. But it well to me, it just <clears throat> he didn't seem scary in that way to me yeah where people are following him because he's what a good because he's a good fighter we don't know um we know that he likes to torture people by hammering stakes through their hands and leaving them for crabs to eat them Mm -hmm. and like okay that's really and the thing is is it's evil but the thing is like we've seen a much more charismatic version of him or version of that type of killer in ramsey bolton right like you right. know why people follow ramsey it's like okay he's got station and he's also <laughs> unspeakably evil um but he's also got charisma and you can see how like a certain type of man would be motivated to join his cause and you're not getting any of that so it's just like why are all these people out here they yeah, just... it would it would have been nice to get something from him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Hold on one second. Okay, I was just looking um to see what it says in the books and in the books he's leading the triarchy's armies. So it's not just like a band of pirates. Mm-hmm. He was actually killing pirates. So yeah, it's a different it's a different thing that goes down in the books, which, you know, we won't get so much into the books. I was just curious as to what the story was behind him in the books because yeah. I couldn't remember. It's as simple as that. I couldn't remember, so I had to look it up. Um, yeah, I, I think I think having more mm-hmm. uh, Kragas Jahar would have been good. And I, I think seeing him fight Damon and, like, actually do well would have been good, too. Yeah. Because Ooh, Damon yeah. cut him in half and with three arrow wounds. yeah and he cut him in half like he didn't just like get a good shot and put the sword through him like he sliced his body in half and i know valerian still stays i was just about to say yeah but like it's not shard blade (laughs) (laughs) ding 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 (laughs) stormlight archive mentioned part two um (laughs) yeah like he he the words have been accepted (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah he it would have been nice to see them fight a, at least a little bit and to you know give yeah. us a, an idea of why he's so terrifying and formidable like why is his army so good but um anyway yeah. we didn't get that that story is done i thought we i thought they would have dragged that out a little longer me too but clearly they have other things to tell and it's good because now you know Although I, I well now we I accidentally we can get home. saw a piece of the next episode which I'm so mad oh, about. Did? Like I it was playing and I went to turn on my lights or something and I was like ah no and then I had to like run and stop it. So I'm gonna just block that out of my brain. But yes, we get we will get Damon coming home, which is gonna be fantastic because fantastic. Mm. Let's get into a little bit of spoilery stuff. So if you're listening and you don't want fire and blood spoilers or House of the Dragon spoilers. Now is your chance to run away. Okay, this is what I wanted to say that was spoilery. Mm-hmm. I feel like they are making Alicent innocent and under the control of her father so that we can somewhat be on her side. But you know that I am Team Rhaenyra all the way. The moment Alicent all ordered day. for them to keep Viserys' death a secret, was the moment she became a villain in my eyes. And everything that came mm-hmm. after, Rhaenyra did terrible things, of course. Damon did some horrible things. Yeah. And but yep. Allison and her team were also doing horrible things and they started it. Yeah. She was scheming. And I feel like they're putting it all she on auto scheming. so that we can have um sympathy for her. 
and also making Rhaenyra bratty so that we won't like her. I feel like yeah. they, they don't. I feel like they want Rhaenyra to be the villain, and I'm and I don't want that. It's gonna really upset me. I'm not here for that at all. It's gonna piss me off too because it's that's that's no, no, you don't. I, it's just like no matter what you do, I'm not gonna like her. You know, like I was annoyed at the way she was rubbing her belly the whole time. <laughs> I will say that's uh, kind of that's kind of just, just like, like a tick because they move around so much when you get yeah. to that size. And I, and I figured that. I figured that. I was <laughs> but like, yeah, okay, I would have well, kept it. I would have kept it under like control in place. front of Rhaenyra. But I'm just like, I, I feel like that that you're right. They want us to, to her to seem like she's a puppet, and but maybe there's but maybe something's going to happen that comes and like forces her to actually have to make these decisions so that we can start to like actually get to hate her the way we want to. If um, they have. I mean, and I, I don't know. I just like, I've just, I want somebody to give me a good auto high tower death. Well, That's yeah. what I'm rooting for. Ooh, should we make a Deadpool? We should make a Deadpool. We should make a okay. Deadpool. Well, because, you oh, know, the shit. show changes stuff. Yeah, so some of it we'll have an idea, mm -hmm. but some we won't. And we also don't know what's going to happen this season. So we can only go off of who we've met yeah. so far. We can, we can add new names as the season goes yeah. on and do like a finale Deadpool. I I want Otto High Otto Hightower to have a really I'll good I'll be really death. disappointed if they have Otto Hightower order the council not to tell anyone or not to re really not to tell Rhaenyra that Viserys is dead. Uh -huh. I'll be really disappointed by that. I need it to be Allison because yeah. it was Allison. It has to be her. It has to be her. I think that's maybe it'll be a thing where it's there or Otto is like away at indisposed and he's not there and she has to make the mm -hmm. call. Or maybe, you know, over time, she becomes more conniving because of his machinations. Mm -hmm. She learns from him. I mean, the more that she sees it is that she's 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 going to, I mean, right? Because seeing, watching her learn from him or just seeing it's like it's very a parallel, parallel to me to Sansa's kind of like the way that she learns to kind of play the game and to scheme and and um, and to figure out how intrigue works the same thing. in politics. Because as evil as Cersei was, she taught Sansa a lot of lessons. Mm hmm Exactly. And I think that um maybe there's maybe there's something that's coming and we're just gonna she's gonna finally realize that no, I actually want my son to be right. the king. Or maybe maybe you know? her rift I want with my son to be will king. grow so big that she's like finally like, you know what, fuck her. Fuck her, she's a spoiled brat. I want my kid to be king because she's not going to be a good like all the things. Like she's already tasted what being queen is. Yeah, like. I would just like to. I would like it to Who be. Who wants more to give that up? Gray, because I know for some people it is really gray, because of the fact that both mm -hmm. sides commit atrocities. But Allison <laughs> is definitely the villain in my eyes, because if she had simply yeah. told Rhaenyra that her father had died, it would have avoided us. Well, possibly avoided a civil war. At least within the family. Yeah. There could have been another one between houses that didn't disagree versus houses that wanted her as queen. Right. But Allison created an, a, a civil war in the family by not telling her that. Like, that's some evil shit to not tell somebody their father mm -hmm. died. And I don't remember how much time had passed, but it was like a lot of time. It was a little yeah, while, like, though. Yeah. It was like going bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's really the only spoilery thing I wanted to talk about. It's just seeing seeing Otto in her ear. I was like, come on. Like let Allison have some agency in this. So I'm hoping it doesn't go that way. I mean, we have yet to see because who knows how far it's even gonna go in this season. I'm assuming they want more than one season, so we might not even get into any They've already been they've been signed up for a second one. They got the second season was Greenland. Yeah, so I'm saying we know that there's a second yeah. season, so they're not gonna give us everything yeah. in this season. So it's gonna move slowly yeah. as far as the events. As yeah. Like Viserys will make it a lot out out of the season alive. Or maybe he'll die at the end. Mm hmm It would make sense for it to end with him dying. And Allison saying not to tell Rhaenyra. Yeah. And Rhaenyra finding out later. <laughs> and then, There's and a like, lot to come, you and then know. Raging, and then we start the next season with Rhaenyra's rage. I like it. I like it. Yeah. 
And I guess the only other spoilery thing that I was saying is that we talked about like with Damon and Rainer and their relationship um, and that whole messy mess. Do you think Lenore is going to be um, gay in the show? And that was the other thing I was going to say. It's like, okay, we see him, but does he like women? We know that he doesn't in mm-hmm. the books. He loves Joffrey um, I think that they should. Yes. I think that they should allow him to. It's like not the first time we've seen it. Like we've got right. Loris. And Renly. Um, and I think that and Renly um yeah I think they should they should leave they should leave him gay they, I mean they probably like, will they probably will I I wonder I would, be, how I would I, that would actually that would really upset if they me. changed it yeah it's a, such a big part of the story yeah I guess we'll see yeah it is a, it is a big part because that's why she's like not sleeping with him mm-hmm. sleeping with exactly Harwin strong that's instead. She gets. she gets such strong yeah. children <laughs> well that's it for us i've been tanya and i'm always nikki and we'll see you next time to find previous episodes go to thousand eyes podcast.com you can also find us on youtube a thousand eyes in one podcast and if you'd like to follow us on social media we're on twitter as thousand eyes one facebook and instagram a thousand eyes in one If you're interested in our speculative fiction book club, that is Wine on an Empty Stomach on Instagram. 